hi again and this is the last piece of this uh, video series we will be talking about uh, e in modern day today and tomorrow and um, let's start with reviewing uh, what e and gear evolved into in 21st century now in the last few decades we are witnessing an ever increasing interest in yurt its origin its design and its uses and uh, after starting uh, studying traditional yurts and how they were made and replicating them a lot of people and even companies started experimenting with modern yurts uh, made of modern materials but based on original concept and design and uh, they came came up with quite a few interesting variations of uh, designs and I just want to uh, go over just a few of them for example uh, if we look uh, at this image in the left top corner we see uh, one of the most common type of modern yurts it's basically uh, a tent uh, made of uh, wooden lattice like kerge and uh, but similar to mongol with straight straight shaped uh, with a glass dome usually on top uh, as a skylight now this uh, design would have uh, modern glass doors and windows or or clear plastic used instead of glass it would be put on a, a permanent solid platform with staircases and etc so uh, it is used mostly not as mobile not so much as mobile dwelling but more as like a, a inexpensive summer house uh, guest house uh, it's used in hotels outdoor hotels uh, uh, summer camps and etc so that's quite a uh, creative adaptation of this old design now next to it on the right you see wooden yurts and these are uh, quite common in Siberia in uh, uh, such republics of Russia as Buryatia, uh, Yakutia, Altai, Tva, and etc. They uh, they build these yurts as log houses in form of log log house or log houses in forms of yurts in their yards. I've been in one of these. Uh, they use them as uh, ritual house houses. Uh, or they can uh, receive their guests there it's a special purpose kind of uh, uh, construction or, or, or structure that a lot of people find necessary to have some of them even have uh, uh, grass growing on their roof which I find uh, very very pleasant because you know I'm, I'm into everything all things environmental and and green so i think this is <laughs> it's one of the most uh, ecologically environmentally friendly uh, modes of yurt today uh, on the left bottom uh, we can see geodesic dome houses uh, they might not um, uh, be considered direct uh, yurt modern yurt houses but uh, in their design in their principles they're very similar they have this uh, semi-spherical shape that performs uh, pretty much like yurt uh, in terms of uh, air circulation and uh, interior space and etc so I consider it's uh, one of the yurt or gear 
family uh, type of ar types of architecture. There are also sectional dome houses. Uh, they're built either from uh, like a metal frame uh, covered with uh, materials or sometimes uh, today they even built entire sections <clears throat> uh, that are assembled on place uh, together and form this uh, yurt-like uh, shelter. It could be this is um, uh, actually this one is portable and mobile it could be taken down and assembled disassembled fairly quickly and easily it could be uh, insulated could be isolated ventilated it would have windows and doors and skylights so th that's another creative uh, uh, and ingenious approach to adopting this idea into new with new technologies and new approaches. So that's uh, kind of a quick review of what uh, E and GEAR have evolved uh, in 21st century. And what's important for me here is that the year didn't stay in its original form. It continues to evolve. It kind of got its second life after this long, long period of neglection and, and forgetting, the interest is just raging out there. A lot of uh, firms and companies opening, uh, building these yurts, and a lot of places, a lot of restaurants, camps, uh, you know, uh, they want to have these, at least one of those. A lot of people buy them just to put them in their backyard. So this is a very big trend right now and it's still going strong now another trend is um, turning the idea of yurt and gear into these large permanent round houses and these are just a few examples in china turkmenistan uh, where they would use these principal principles of yurt architecture but scale them up and turn into these interesting uh, modern buildings and uh, this shape and this structure allows for very interesting space configurations uh, that are not possible within regular square houses square buildings so that's a whole new uh, it's it's an additional uh, it's an additional uh, way to form this uh, uh, to organize space architecturally. Uh, at the same time, I must say uh, one downside of this approach is that. When you scale it up and turn into this large, heavy, permanent building, it kind of loses, uh, it kind of defeats its original purpose because uh, yurt is light, mobile, portable, movable, uh, transformable structure. But when you set it in concrete and stone and glass and steel, it kind of loses, it, it looks great and it might even operate really well but it kind of loses this uh, original uh, flavor original design and purpose and i must admit that i did not uh, avoid this temptation by myself uh, on this image you can see uh, this is part of my uh, architectural diploma thesis project I designed uh, a large ethnic, historical ethnic park, uh, kind of a historical reconstruction park. And uh, this was part of it, uh, showing the future of a yurt. And I designed a mall, a retail mall or entertaining mall in the form of a yurt. Uh, Unlike uh, the previous examples, 
I actually designed it to be exactly like a real yurt in terms of uh, its its structure, in terms of its frame. So uh, in my imagination, it would have these uh, large steel structures in form of kerge, works, and shanrak, exactly repeating the wooden frame of a yurt. And it would be actually uh, uh, load carrying structure. It, it's not just for the looks. But uh, instead of felt cover, I thought I would cover it with curtain glass wall using spider system. And I thought it would be really cool because you can see uh, the skeleton, the frame inside through the glass. So I thought it would be a new word in architecture. And inside I placed uh, underground parking. I placed uh, 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 a circus-like theater or amphitheater. And then one, two, three levels of, uh, of a mall itself. Two of them would be given to retail and entertainment. And then there would be a food court on top under under a dome you would have this uh, glass elevator taking you upstairs there would be uh, all kind of uh, you know egress uh, egress exits staircases fire exits and etc uh, you know fire systems ventilation systems all kind of safety systems and etc so uh, we would end up with a building that looks like a yurt from the outside, but performs as a, as a modern mall, mall on the inside. Now, uh, while I think that this was a very interesting design exercise, and it would be definitely very interesting uh, feet and, and landmark building, but again, I admit that it would not be in line with the original <laughs> intent uh, of, of a yurt design. Still, would be very interesting <laughs> to see this built one day. Uh, this is uh, these are the plans and section of it, and the showing the frame, uh, the inspiration of of this uh, of its frame from typical standard Kazakh yurt. Now, what is uh, the future of Yu and Ger tomorrow? So we covered what it is today and where we can take it within the immediate or, or short term or mid term future. But what's going to happen to yurt in the long term? What's the future of it in 100 years, 200 years, 500 years? And uh, this is where I want to talk about my book. Uh, it's called How the Neo-Nomads Will Save the World, Alter Globalism Edition. I wrote this book in 2019, uh, 2020 during the COVID pandemics. And uh, this was a lockdown. We were all depressed and scared, and we didn't know what's going to happen. We had this uh, loudspeaker uh, PA system uh, somewhere in this in the city that was reminding us uh, about uh, the quarantine measures, uh, the the COVID uh, pandemic was very scary it, it, we felt like it, it felt like we were inside of a sieged uh, town it felt like war and it was quite depressing so this is when i came up with this book of course uh, i didn't i didn't come up with this book uh, right there and then i was conceiving it for a lot for a long time but the quarantine and uh, COVID, the isolation, gave us this 
uh, gave me this final push to finally sit down and put all my thoughts and research together and it led to creation of this book and in it I uh, described a lot of things about uh, uh, nomadic civilization, its culture, its economy, its social structure and how it is underappreciated, misunderstood and how it's very unfortunate because we can learn so much from it especially right now where the world is so fragile where the uh, environmental issues the uh, ecological catastrophes are looming so uh, we could learn a lot from this and i dare to say the most environmentally friendly the most ecologically positive civilization in the history of humanity and this is what uh, my book is all about. I'm going to put a link uh, if you're interested. It's available on Amazon Kindle version. I will also uh, update it and put and upload as uh, a printable version too. Uh, but you can get it right now uh, uh, as Amazon Kindle version if you want because uh, I talk in depth about the impact of uh, nomadic civilization on the history of humanity, the inventions that the nomads gave the world, like uh, wheel, transport, pants, uh, sleeves, uh, you know, jackets, coats, uh, underwear, uh, shirts, uh, high boots, saddles, uh, bridles, horse harnesses. Yurts, gears, and etc. and etc. Now, uh, back to my original point. What is the future of E and gear? And um, in my vision, in my um, sort of, uh, in my version of the of the of the future, I think yurt. Uh, or gear or e would have could have a very significant future because uh, if you look at the principles underlying principles of uh, nomadic lifestyle and and e and gear it's a mobile uh, ecologically uh, positive ecologically friendly type of architecture that is very very uh, in tune and in line with our modern uh, thinking uh, you can even say that it's just super uber progressive it's in my view it's more progressive than anything else that is offered today as a solution to our environmental uh, issues uh, uh, and trying to prevent uh, this environmental collapse and catastrophe and, and mass extinction. I think nomadic lifestyle offers the best and maybe the only available solution uh, that is uh, at the same time achievable because we have this know-how. It existed for three thousand uh yeah for three millennia for three thousand years it existed so this is not a concept uh based on some unproven theory this is a concept based on uh hard data on archaeology on history we even have surviving nomads today that can offer practical knowledge uh, we have books, we have reconstructions. So we put it all together. Uh, we have this very interesting opportunity to design something based on model that worked 100%. Unlike uh, other theories that we have today that are based on untested, unproven, hypothetical 
solutions. This is the solution that really worked and it could be based, uh, our future could be based on it. At least this is something I came to believe after many, many years of research and contemplating and, and comparing with different solutions. So <clears throat> uh, how would it look like? I want to wrap it up with this image that I created, uh, a sort of uh, fantasy artistic image of what the future Kush uh, might, look, might look like, of what the nomads of the 21st or 22nd or 23rd century might look like. Uh, I imagine these uh, yurt-like or gear-like vehicles, uh, kind of like, uh, uh, I call them, in my book, I call them RVs, but instead of recreational vehicles, I call them residential vehicles. Uh, so the idea uh, that comes from uh, uh, Saka Scythian uh, tents, movable tents and wagons, but uh, using modern technology, we put them on wheelbase uh, electrical engines. We cover top with solar panels and uh, using lightweight, uh, durable materials uh, with good uh, insulation and isolation qualities. We just form these movable uh, dwellings uh, like yurts or, or any kind of other uh, suitable RV, residential vehicles. Uh, we can see other types of uh, vehicles and uh, uh, movable technology. For example, these uh, just regular vehicles may be used for scouting or uh, transporting or, uh, you know, for any kind of other type of activity where vehicles are necessary. Also, we can use flying vehicles, uh, you know, with uh, longer uh, range, faster speed. At the same time, we would probably still use horses because uh, there are still areas where no vehicle can pass except for horse. That's why horses are still used in military and police in many countries even in 21st century, not because of tradition, but because they simply couldn't find better uh, alternative for it. Probably we will use these uh, uh, robotic dogs uh, or robotic animals, uh, robotic uh, moving uh, uh, modes of transportation and etc. And yet we would still have our livestock, our sheep, our horses and camels. So that's what uh, the future might hold for us in, in my vision. Uh, it might sound utopic and I get that a lot, but uh, to which I always reply that what is utopia? Utopia is an idea based on untested uh, sometimes unrealistic uh, ideas and technologies. Well, in this case, uh, we are just adding modern 21st century uh, technology, which already exists, to something that existed for 3,000 years. So uh, nothing here on this image that we can't have yesterday, because... Uh, a lot of the things you see on this image existed even in 20th century, not to mention 21st century. Uh, the drones, uh, the solar panels, the electric engines, the robotic dogs, they all exist today, even commercially. So uh, giving it a little bit of tweaks and uh, changing their, their design a little bit where necessary and adding all our knowledge uh, about nomadic lifestyle and nomadic civilization of the past and its impact on the uh, environment and ecology, 
we can pretty much come up with a hundred percent feasible practical solution based on uh, this idea and this is where I think uh, the future of E and gear could be possibly of course if we choose to walk this path anyways I really enjoyed this um, ride uh, talking about yurts and sharing my knowledge with you I really want to hear your feedback uh, if you're interested uh, uh, to find out more about uh, the future the futuristic uh, version the neo-nomadic uh, version of it you can uh, either get my book or you know ask me questions maybe I can uh, answer them I'm also planning to uh, make another playlist based on this book so uh, I'll put more information there about this idea and that is it we're concluding this video series I hope you liked it I hope you found at least some information was useful and new for you and if you have any questions please write in the comments or uh, write directly to me I'll be happy to respond because I really enjoy talking about it I enjoy sharing ideas I enjoy uh, staying in touch and discussing it because uh, this is when we get these new ideas and I think it's very important and it's also very much uh, nomadic because nomads were known for traveling uh, you know back and forth thousands of miles and carrying uh, bits and pieces or even entire big chunks of different cultures moving them back and forth where they otherwise would never meet each other so Thank you once again. Uh, thank you for staying with me this long. Please subscribe for my channel. Uh, get uh, n notifications of new uploads and videos. Uh, please uh, write to me. And I hope uh, we will uh, talk more about this in the future. So thank you very much and my very best to you. Bye-bye.